Ian talks. <coughs> so, uh, my book was Atonement by Ian McGowan. Oh. So, you guys are pretty familiar with this book, so I'm going to go through the plot fairly quickly. And so, our Atonement plot mm. is a bunch of people, these upper class British people, are out in this townhouse. And there, this young man named Robbie Turner starts to like this girl named Cecilia Tallis. And so he sends her a note. Uh, it's a fairly explicit note, and for some reason he decides to send it through her little sister. And her little sister, Brienne, decides to read it, and then later stumbles upon them having a sexual encounter. Also, Brienne finds uh, another girl being raped by someone that she cannot see. Brienne then goes on to blame Robbie because he, she saw Robbie having a uh, sexual encounter with her sister. And Robbie is falsely blamed for the uh, rape of Cecilia. Uh, Robbie is falsely blamed for the rape of Lola. My bad. And he is imprisoned and eventually forced to fight in World War II where he dies. Also, Cecilia goes off to do her own thing and also dies in World War II. While Brini lives a long, happy life. So, what I decided to go, th or what direction I decided to take with this project, I decided from watching a 2002 interview with Ian McGowan, in which he talks about his uh, work in the 70s and how he, just, he, saw, he thought that a lot of the British literature for the time was pretty lethargic and boring. So he decided that he wanted to go and shock people. And he even earned himself the nickname Ian Macabre from uh, some British critics for his uh, work. And you can really see this in Atonement, where you have this gruesome rape, and you have all the uh, lovers dying, and yeah. You can see that there's this shocking, controversial event that he wanted to use to bring attention to himself. And so the direction I decided to take with this paper was, why do we like tragic elements? And so you can obviously see that there's a lot of tragic elements in Atonement. You have the death of the lovers, even though they seemingly don't deserve it. The people that seem to have done the worst crimes, like Paul Marshall, the rapist, gets away with it. He marries Lola, has a long and happy life. Or maybe not happy, but he at least goes on to be unpunished for his crimes. Uh, Rini goes on to be an author. She doesn't seem to face any punishment for everything she did wrong. So just a lot of things that are pretty upsetting to the reader, or at least should be upsetting to the reader, don't seem to bother us, because people love atonement as a book. So the question I asked was, why do people like to read these tragic stories? Why do we like to read things that should be upsetting? And so I came up with a couple of different reasons, both backed up by uh, psychologists. And one reason is uh, we like to see other people fail. Now, the Germans have a word for this, and I'm probably pronouncing this wrong. Helena might be able to help me out. Uh, Schadenfreude? Freude? Yeah, it's a, the word for uh, gaining pleasure from others' misfortunes. And so one reason that we uh, might, right, might enjoy reading tragedies or reading upsetting things is that we look at other people's lives and we see that they're doing badly and we're thinking to ourselves, at least that's not us. Or we look at other people's lives and we see them doing badly and we think, maybe I can gain from this. So there's something about reading other people's failures that makes people just a little bit happy about themselves. Another explanation I found is that uh, the brain really only remembers emotionally stimulating, act er, emotionally stimulating things, events. So when we read, we want to read something that's more emotionally stimulating, be that uh, angry or, or make that be that angering or any other feeling that any other intense feeling that it brings upon us. So these tragic elements, like the rape of Brienne or the uh, rape of a. Uh, Lola Quincy and the false accusal of Brienne and Robbie, uh, those make us, those are very controversial events and they make us angry and impassioned. And so the brain remember the, remembers those because it was more stimulated by them. And so that's one reason that we might enjoy reading the tragedies and go back to them. So lastly we have Brienne. And this was probably the most controversial character in the book. Because when most people read Atonement, they form some sort of opinion on Brienne. And there's typically debates or discussions about her, and people will either say, oh, she was too young, she didn't know what she was doing, or, oh, she was terrible, she's the cause for every single problem in this book, it was all her fault. And so this divisive issue sort of sparks a debate that brings up these impassioned emotions, 
and then people will have the more emotionally stimulated brain, and they'll remember the tragedy. So all in all, people sort of just like tragedies like they like looking at a car crash. It's hard to look away, but uh, we just keep going back to them. And, uh, that's it.